Welcome back, and in this video we're going to finish up our inventory system. There are two things that we still need to do with our inventory system. First, we want to show what is currently equipped on the player, so when you open your inventory, you can see which item is equipped. And second, we also want to hide all of our other UI when we're in the inventory system. You know, typically when you get into a menu of your RPG that you're playing, displaying the health and all the other typical UI or HUD elements are no longer there because you're in a menu system. So we're going to hide that as well. But the first thing we're going to do is we are going to show how to make it so that we are showing what is equipped in this inventory uh, menu section. So we're going to jump back into this inventory brain. Now we are going back to page number two. And this is the page that has the full inventory menu. And the real line that we're looking for is this line right here, line number 28, where it displays the name of the item. What we want to have is we want to have an indicator on displaying the name of the item, where just in parentheses it shows equipped for this item. We can do this by using a text variable, which is something that we haven't done yet before. Let's add a line here. And we're going to add a plus, so go to math, choose plus, then go to values, text, and new text variable. We're going to call this text variable equipped. The great thing about a text variable is it's something that you can kind of dynamically set within any object what this text variable is equal to. We're also going to say plus not just equipped, but it equipped. This will make it so what we're going to do is we're going to have every object get to store this text variable called equipped. And then we get to locally reference every one of those to kind of determine what this text string is equal to inside of this object. Now we're going to add a line above it and we're going to look for if this is in my equipment. So we're going to say when, go to objects, and choose equipment. And then we're going to choose uh, compare contains it, then do it equipped equals, let's add in some text here. So we're going to put a space and going to say equipped. We need to put an else statement here as well because if something, if basically something isn't in my equipment, we want to make sure that it equipped is set to or equal to nothing. So we're going to do that by just having a space here of blank text. Let's jump in and see what that looks like. So we're going to punch some goblins. Let's take care of all of them. Let's pick up some of these items. So I'm still going to, just like before, only pick up one of each item to make it a bit easier to, to follow along with. We're going to go inside, open this up, and let's select coin, for instance. Now look at that. That's great coin now has this text string equipped show up on it. We click on Avalon's Epic Scepter and that shows equipped now. Let's uh, exit out of our menu. Let's open our menu back up and that's great. We're going to see uh, equipped still on Avalon's Epic Scepter. Go out, go back in and equipped still continues on. That's uh, perfect. That is a good indicator of what's equipped. Another thing you can do with text strings as you can actually set a text string not just equal to text, you can set it equal to an icon. Instead of equipped here, let's actually use an equipment icon. We're going to exit out here. We are going to go ahead and instead choose objects, gallery picker, go over to icons here, and I had typed in uh, equip already. And that's what we're going to choose. We're going to choose this equip icon. And now, instead of just having equipped in parentheses next to it, 
We're going to have this equipped icon next to the item that is currently equipped in our menu system. Let's grab a few of these items. Jump into test. Or sorry, jump into the menu. Let's select an item. And look at that. We have this uh, nice equipment indicator. Let's get out of here. And again, Stone Sword is showing as equipped. So you always want to have some sort of visual indicator to show what is currently equipped on the player. You can, of course, play around with this and make up whatever icons you want to have that uh, show that this item is equipped. Next thing to take care of is let's get rid of all of that UI that is showing for the player when they're in the equipment or inventory section. To do that, what we need to now do is we need to go ahead and centralize all of the UI that displays on the character. Right now we have this level up frame. This is showing some UI where it's displaying the current level, current XP, and XP to next level. And then our main character is also displaying some UI. They are showing off their health and also their mana. Let's make a new page inside of our main player. And let's call this page, or let's rename it, at in-game UI, or maybe core UI, or something to, to denote the fact that this is going to be all of the UI that isn't going to be showing when you have your menus open. So, in-game UI, let's copy all of our UI that's showing up in the world into there. So we're copying these two lines from our first page. Now we can go ahead and delete them from our first page. Then we can also go ahead and copy these three lines right here. Little pro tip is I could individually copy each one of these three, go to our next page or our player um, and paste them in. Or I could simply put all these as child lines under a line that has nothing in it and copy that. And now this is gonna copy all three of those lines for me. Let's go over to in-game UI and it copies all three of those lines. We can now make these no longer child lines. And this is all of the UI that is going to be displaying. Now the only uh, issue here is this XP to next level is equal to something that seems like is local to this level up thing. So that's something you have to really take note of is when you're moving UI around or really anything from one brain to another, what is local and what is global? XP to next level is a local variable. Let's go ahead and change this to a global variable so we can reference it outside of here. And let's just go through and make sure that um, anytime we're saying XP to next level, we're making this a global variable now because this is something we want to reference across multiple brains. Great, that's a global variable. Let's jump in here and just make a global variable here as well. Now we can go ahead and steal some logic for our, from our inventory brain. Let's go to page one. So the inventory brain is calling the page inventory menu whenever this thing called inventory menu, this boolean called inventory menu is true. First thing we want to do, let's also make inventory menu a global variable. Or actually, let's not, and let's see what happens. We're going to copy this right here, this inventory menu boolean. We're going to go to our main player again, go to page one, and just put really anywhere, doesn't matter where. When here we're going to say not inventory menu, so when inventory menu is false. When inventory menu is false, that means that we can show our in-game UI, but when it's true, we can't. So when not inventory menu, that means that we can go ahead and call this page that we created, which we called in-game UI. Great, so we're looking for something called in-game UI. So call page, go to values, text, the text area, and let's look for call page here. In-game UI, there we go. Let's test this. And we should be able to test this without having to pick up anything. And look at that. I didn't need to set this as a global variable in order to have all of the UI disappear. Hit it again, all the UI appears again. Hit this again, and all that UI disappears. 
So why is that? Why did I not need to set this as a global variable? Why did, why did this work just as a regular variable? You know, a local variable. And the reason for that is you have to remember that we're using add brain in, in our player. So our player is adding the inventory brain to themselves. That means any Boolean or any variable at all that's used in the inventory brain is part of their brain now. So it becomes local. So this inventory menu Boolean is a local variable because this entire logic cube is running inside of their brain. That gets to be important because as more and more brains are added, if you reuse a local variable and are setting it to something new, it's going to start conflicting with itself. So just make sure that anytime you're using add brain, you look to make sure there aren't variables that are called the same thing that are used in different ways between those two. And it's also something where you can look at and you don't have to set something as a global variable. It's always great to limit the amount of things or the amount of variables that you're setting as global variables. The less global variables you have, the easier it is to manage everything in your game. So congratulations, you have now made a full inventory system. In the past three tutorials, we've gone through quite a bit. We've gone through exactly what an inventory is and making a simple inventory selector, making a full inventory menu, and now making that inventory menu display what is equipped and not display any other UI. This is kind of a good stopping point for this RPG tutorial series. We may pick it up with adding more videos in the future, but we think it's proper time for you to try and use all these mechanics that we have taught you over the past 10 videos and go ahead and try and make your own RPG game. We've shown you how to make quests, we've shown you how to make mana, inventory, a level up system, increase your strength and health when you level up, different spawners for enemies, how to make enemies give you random loot and give you XP. Now it's really up to you to build out different types of unique enemies with different loot drops build out new quests, and design your world. So take it from here and see what you can build, and check back with us in the future for if we add additional RPG tutorial videos. Thank you guys for sticking around with us for these last few videos, and hopefully you learned something new.